Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this section, I am going to show you how to use the IBM Data Science Workbench. So if you're going to submit assignments in this class and work through the examples and execute code, you need a Python environment that has Keras and TensorFlow. There are several ways to go about doing this, and I have other videos that show you the other ways. Um, probably the most common is you'll simply install Python, Keras, and TensorFlow on your local computer, and I have instructions on that for both Mac and Windows. However, you maybe you don't have a real powerful Mac or powerful computer. Maybe you don't want to install Python. Maybe you're using just your work computer and you don't have access to install software on it. Anyway, if you would prefer to run this completely in the cloud, you can use a um, you can use something called the IBM Data Science Workbench. This is a free uh, web-based application from IBM. So if you're in Module 1, I have a link to it a little bit further down. If you just do Control F and Data, look for actually Workbench. IBM Data Science Workbench under Course Resources. If you click on this, it will let you, uh, it'll take you to this website. So this is the IBM Data Science Workbench. If you log into here, first of all, you'll have to sign up for it. And it's it's free. It's, it's really pretty good. They give you a fairly decent environment that you can actually run TensorFlow and Keras code on it. They usually keep a version of Keras and TensorFlow on it that's pretty close to what we're using in class. It might be just a little bit behind. If anything doesn't work on here, I will let you know. I usually try these examples on here first as well, just so that I can give you a heads up on anything that might be. Okay, so what you'll want to do with this is go ahead and click on the Jupyter Notepad, and this will launch a Jupyter Notepad for you. This usually takes two to three minutes. They're not kidding. This is only the first time that you launch it for your session, so once you're using this, you won't see this, but if you come back in, say, the next day, you'll get the two to three minutes. So they're literally creating a virtual machine for you with I think around 8 gig of RAM, so it's it's nice that IBM has this available, and it's all free and open tools, so you're not using anything IBM proprietary. And by the way, I have no affiliation with IBM whatsoever on this. It's just a free tool that's that can be useful. Okay, and here we are. We are in a sort of a demo Jupyter Notebook. You can see here all kinds of recent notebooks. This is just from other stuff that I've been messing with. You'll, you'll have a much shorter list there. What I'm going to do, by the way, when you start up my data for the first time, so I, I started up two windows here, really. I have the data science workbench, and then I clicked on my data. I actually held down shift when I clicked my data just so that it would pop open a second uh, a second browser window. The my data one shows you the files and so here's the my data the one that it's starting up I guess that's another two to three minutes and once once these get loaded it's not too bad but um, that will show you the files that you have um, that you have access to. Now I will have a few files in my area here already because I've used this before. You will probably have a very empty sort of area. Now it starts you in resources data. This is where all your data files will go. So if you need to give, so if you have a data file, you can't access it on your disk from Data Science Workbench. You have to upload it into here. So from my data, you could upload data, just drag them into there, and it would upload them right to your data directory. That's why a lot of the, the scripts assume for class assume that your data is in a subdirectory called data. Now samples, don't worry about that. That's just stuff that IBM gave you. If we go back, we'll now be in resources. And this is your main area. Now I am going to delete this. This is actually the class folder. I had downloaded this previously. I want to show you how you can download this for yourself. So I'm just going to delete that very quickly. This is a drastic command. You're deleting that entire folder. So only do that if you want to start over from that. So you can see it's gone. And this is your data directory. These are all of your files. 
IBM creates a bunch of these folders for you already. And some of these are just folders that I, I've been working with. But let's go back to the Jupyter Notebook. I am going to create an empty Jupyter Notebook of Python 3. So this is a Jupyter Notebook, just like the kind that we installed for the class uh, for the classes. So you can print hello world. And this is a Jupyter Notebook. You run it. This doesn't run on your local computer. It runs in the cloud and IBM gives you the response back. So what we have to do though is you need to get the class files downloaded and and ready to to work with this. So one trick on Python notebooks is you know I give you these pip commands like pip install tensorflow you can do any command line thing you just have to put an exclamation point in front of it. So if you do exclamation point pwd this is Linux it, or Unix it gives you the working directory print working directory. So you'll get um, you'll get slash resources and that's the directory that all your stuff is stored in and that'll be that's useful when you submit assignments because you need to know the path to your file that you're submitting. If you do pound ls minus al again this is this is Unix commands ls means list the directories you don't have to do a lot of Unix I'm just showing you kind of what it is but this just shows you the directory. So this is the same stuff that you are looking at off in that other in that other window in my data. You can see all the untitles and the um, Jupyter folder. Those are all right there. Same thing. Now you don't need, you'll need to do just a little bit of Unix at the beginning. What you need to do is pound uh, exclamation point get git. It's source control, get. And then you need to put the URL to the class web site, to the GitHub repository. If you just search for Jeff Heaton GitHub, there's a link to it on the class page too. Um, but in fact, it shows you it right there, the T81 Deep Learning. This is T81, so make sure you're at J Jeff Heaton T81, GitHub Jeff Heaton T81 Deep Learning. You can clone or download. Make sure that whatever you make sure that it's selected to use HTTPS. It should default it to that. It's only defaulting to um, SSH because I am the owner of this. But make sure you, whatever you're copying here starts from HTTPS. Copy that. I'll switch it back to use SSL. Don't do if it's get at that's wrong. Do HTTPS. So I just copied that into the clipboard, and then I'm going to paste it here. Actually, let me zoom this in just a bit. Make it easier to see on YouTube. Oh, and don't just do that. Do get clone. Get clone that. And of course, pressing enter doesn't do anything. You have to click the little run arrow. And that basically downloads, it takes a moment, but not too long. It downloads the entire course, all the course files to your, uh, to your get environment, it's, or to your uh, data science workbench. So we have a four there now, so that means it's done. It's just the run number, it was the fourth thing you ran. And if we go to this other, to this my data, and again, you just click on my data up here if, if you need to get to it. You can't see it yet, but let's just do a refresh because we just uploaded it. So you, you can't see it yet. So you have to, you're, it moved you to data again. So you want to go back one. And here it is, T81, 558 Deep Learning. And here's all of the, the classes. So let's go ahead and go into class one. You can just click on this and that'll take you into the Jupyter Notebook for class one.
And here's my course material. You'll want to just sort of, you always want to make sure you run the helpful functions first. You want to run the code blocks in the order that they come in. And there you have it. It's done. And you continue downward. This is just text, so it doesn't actually execute. But if we get all the way to the next block of text, wherever I have that, these are all of the commands. If you need to install any of these in Jupyter, in, in IBM Data Science Workbench, just run these with an exclamation point in front. Exclamation point pip install scikit-learn um, would work just fine. You don't have to install any of these, though, because IBM has already done that for you. So you, you should be fine. But if you do need to install another one, that's, that's what you would do. And this is a little block of code where I print out the latest versions. The, the ones that are already in the file, that is what I'm using for the class. So I, the 1.4 and the 2.1, this is just for this semester that I recorded it in. You might see, you'll probably see later numbers if you run this in subsequent uh, semesters until I until it changes enough that I re-record it. But if you run this, that'll let you know that everything's installed correctly. And if you notice, the Python, it, it's gone from the screen now, but I used Anaconda Python. IBM does not. They use their own sort of just standard Python that they've installed all of these packages from scratch on. So you'll, you'll see that when they print out the versions, uh, it's just straight up Python, Python 3.5. Now in the class, currently I'm using 3.6, might be using something later by the time you, you see this video. But I always try to check to make sure that the IBM Data Science Workbench is, that the version it has is pretty compatible with what we're using in class. So make sure you can get those. And if that's all working, then you should be able to um, run any of the examples. You can also submit your assignments through the Data Science Workbench. Just watch the video on how to do that. I have a sample um, path on there for how you would reference a file that was stored in the IBM Data Science Workbench. So this is a potentially a tool you might want to use for your learning experience. I probably recommend installing it onto your computer like the other videos show you, but if you'd prefer to run this completely from the cloud and not have to install anything, this is, this is certainly an acceptable way to go. Thank you.